Hello, I'm Bill Wong, Technology Editor with Electronic Design, and we're here at the Embedded System Conference. I figured we'd uh, ask some of the experts to give some their recommendations to people that are going to be interested in going into engineering and science. So, what are your recommendations to those people? Well, I think all engineers are, are tinkerers at heart. So, the access to the technology is so prevalent now. So, things like the plug computer that you can get for $99, you can basically start using it to uh, write Android applications and start just using the technology, right? A lot of the, you know, the Facebook, the Microsoft, all those people were people that were tinkers that, you know, landed on some new application and changed the world. I think there's two things, and I know we only kind of asked for one, but here's two. The first one is this. Your engineering capability really is not just about the data, it's about communicating that data, whether you're doing it in speaking, whether you're doing it in writing, it's just like the systems that we build. It's not that the system is is all that great. It's about the fact that the system is communicating with somebody, and people are the same way. So that communication aspect of your engineering work is a really critical one. And the second one is just this. You need to think about your engineering degree as simply a license to learn. You're not coming out of college knowing everything. You're coming out of college knowing how to learn what it is you need to know. Well, from a software perspective, I think expose yourselves to lots of different t kinds of technology, whether it's um, embedded systems, web programming, uh, uh, application programming. Uh, exposure to lots of different things is very, is very, very good thing to do. To somebody who's currently in education, I would say, look at what your real strengths are and don't get pigeonholed into a direction that don't really play to those strengths. And if that means going in a different engineering direction, so be it. Just, just go for it. Uh, my advice for aspiring engineers is twofold. First of all, to continue your education as much as you possibly can because the engineering education is outdated approximately every 3.7 years. As an adjunct professor, I know how, how quickly things change and so it's imperative for uh, aspiring engineers engineers to always stay current on technologies. And the second thing is, is that if you're in the engineering school, uh, you should take advantage of internship programs so that you can learn what kinds of real jobs engineers are doing and what kinds of skills you really want. And uh, most importantly, it uh, teaches you whether you really truly want to be an engineer or not. So it's important to find that out before you get too terribly deep into the engineering program. You know, if I were a student today studying engineering, I what I would focus on, and it's been more how I've uh, evolved in my career, is actually I wouldn't focus. I would be more of a generalist. So I ended up taking device physics classes, I ended up taking a bunch of software, a bunch of computer architecture classes. So I would try to strive for a broader background in engineering, and then as you move into your career, you'll find out how and where you're going to apply that, and that, that tends to be a, a better base in my opinion. Get involved in the engineering communities that are out there. There's a lot of cool new technologies that are going on with BeagleBoard.org where people can get their feet wet with embedded processing and also learn a lot about how to get into embedded, build your own systems, tinker. There's so many different resources that are out there that it's just really fun. I think the single piece of advice I would give uh, aspiring engineers would be to you know, keep up with technology, keep up with innovations, and just uh, keep abreast of everything that's happening out there in the technology side of the world. I would ask a student to continue in a foreign language because work is so global these days and that's something you might not consider with a scientific background or scientific education, but it's, it's vital to communicate and uh, have different ways to do that going forward. So based on my experience being in engineering uh, area, I find that it's uh, always most important to stay curious and try to find answers when you run into a challenge or a problem and by that you will learn a lot more as you move forward in your career. Yeah, so I'd say you know the things that impacted me the most uh, uh, during my engineering career were just was just taking the time as an aspiring engineer uh, to sort of to sort of play uh, try to prototype systems um, for example I remember you know designing my first PCBs as sort of a side project in school before we had gotten there yet uh, I think there's uh, there's also a lot of options today for the aspiring engineers, things like Lego Mindstorms, right? Get out there, play, don't be afraid to fail a lot, try some things out. I think that's really how uh, that engineers get excited about a career in engineering and also how they learn the best. As a recent college grad myself, I would definitely recommend 
brand new engineers to just get started. Uh, don't be intimidated by the huge portfolio of, of these various microcontroller devices, for example. Uh, I would just kind of pick one and get started as quickly as possible. Um, and really, you'll, you'll, you'll start learning as you go. So that would be my recommendation. Well, I guess the advice I'd give is that um, it's going to change, whatever you can do. Um, the good thing, the first thing you need is whatever you get at university, the time you have, make the most of it to get a solid base because that's one thing you can always fall back on. And afterwards, you know, technologies are going to change. The latest t language, programming language, is probably not going to be the one you're going to be using in 10 years' time. And everything is going to change. That's not a problem if you've got a solid base and you feel good about it, where you want to go. Yeah. I guess uh, stay curious, you know. You, you, even when you're deemed an expert or you represent some uh, exp expertise in, in a given field like whichever engineering you've chosen, um, there, there's a lot to learn and the curiosity factor is what makes it fun. Find things that make you curious and, and learn about them and, and be flexible because a lot of opportunities come your way. Um, that, that curiosity will drive your growth in, uh, professionally. Well, I've spent a couple of days here at the Multicore Expo and Embedded Systems Conference, and given all the technology and advancement in multi-core SOCs and devices, there is clearly a lot of horsepower that this new silicon is bringing about, but there are challenges on how to use it and the software that goes with it. I'd really advise or um, you know, put in thoughts to some uh, young aspiring engineer to Look at the field of multi-core. There's a lot of innovation happening. There's a lot of applications that it can go into from smartphones to tablets to big infrastructure equipment. Lots of opportunity, lots of challenges. I think um, an engineer, young engineer, can build their career around it. I'd say that uh, just seize the opportunities. There's just so many new things coming out. The Internet of Things, uh, just the concept of that is really exciting. So many new designs are happening. And uh, just seize the opportunity and get, go after it. Expect things to change. Nothing is going to be the same ten years from now 15 years from now, you've got to be on top of what everybody else in the business of engineering is doing and be ready to adapt. Right now I'm expecting big changes from the smart grid in ways that you can only begin to imagine. I just finished talking to some guys about security. In the smart grid, the ultimate idea is to have people setting prices for electricity by buying and selling futures on the commodity exchange based on real-time data about demand. If you don't think that's an opportunity for criminals to game the system and try to make lots of money, then you're, you're not thinking right. And the opportunity to stop them from doing that is going to be huge. And who knows what besides the smart grid is coming along that's going to open up vast new opportunities 